uh, tireless, tireless advocate for water issues uh, in uh, MLA, John Slater, who uh, I want to welcome up to the podium. John is a former chair of the Okanagan Basin Water Board and a former mayor of Osoyoos, and uh, we're very pleased to have him uh, acting on our behalf in Victoria. Thanks, Aaron. I know we're a little bit behind, but um, um, thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, as you can tell, um, uh, you know, Stu and I worked together in Victoria, or Victoria, in, in Asuyas for many years, and um, he's kind of taken over as mayor and chair of the Okanagan Base Board where I was uh, three years ago, so not kind of, but done a great job. You can, you can tell we're passionate about uh, the water in the south end in the Okanagan. So mitigation and adaptation are both necessary as complementary strategies to cope with climate change challenge. If mitigation is about carbon, then adaptation is about water. Designing with nature captures the essence of climate change ad adaptation. Adaptation is about responding to challenges that will inevitably occur. Adaptation is at the community level and is therefore, without collaboration, rainwater management is at the heart of designing with nature. To illustrate this point, I, I, will, uh, I will tell you a little story. Uh, in a few minutes, uh, Ted Vandergulik is going to be talking about the Beyond the Guidebook 2010. And later this morning, you'll be hearing from Kim Stevens. And my story is about the Mayors of Chairs focus group back in 2006. It provided uh, early inspiration for uh, Kim, I'm, I'm pretty sure, and ultimately made the Beyond the Guidebook 2010 possible. At that time, I was mayor, as I said, and um, on page 40 of the guidebook, you will, you will find a conversational template where Kim used this as a basis for interviews with focus groups throughout the valley. One of the questions was, what does design with nature mean to me, John Slater, as chair of the board and mayor of Asuyas? We were sitting in Smitty's, and I'm going to tell you a little story about this. Um, you know, he, he said, uh, when he said, uh, what, what does a lighter hydrological footprint mean to me? I replied, look out the window. And, oh, okay. So we're looking out the window. And I see him. So we're looking out the window of Smitty's and we're looking at this building across the street. And I said, that's what design by nature is. And he looks at Tim Hortons and goes, what, what are you talking about, right? And I said, that has a lighter hydro hydrological footprint. And he says, why? And I said, because we, Stu and I on council, passed a bylaw in the town of Asuyas stating that all rainwater on any new developments in Asuyas had to be contained on site. So the parking lot, the building, all the rainwater that comes off that building has to stay on that site. It can't go into, that's right on Main Street. And on Main Street, you know, the, in the old days in the Okanagan, what we used to do, we used to say, look, get the water off Main Street as fast as possible, build these catch basins, run it into the lake, run it into the rivers, run it into Mission Creek, run it into wherever. And that's what we used to do, and we can't do that anymore. And the city says, as he says, there's two cues in in uh, in water for a serious and so we took that policy, and we even went further. We went new, brand new watermark hotel down at the bottom of Main Street. We said, okay. The the developer came to us, sat down with us at council, and said, look, we can't do this. Our, our building site is way too small. Um, what can we do? We know the bylaws there. What can we do? So we said, well. First off, um, you know, we need a pathway in front of your building on your property. And secondly, uh, we have a discharge that comes right down beside your hotel from Main Street of all our stormwater now currently. Why can't we get your engineers, the developers engineers, to, and, and Ron was part of it as, as our uh, uh, maintenance guys, um, went and looked at it and said, okay, the capacity of the water on that watermark site was X number of cubic meters a year. 
in, a, in an event, a 10-year event, a 20-year event, a 100-year event. So we said, Let, let's design something that'll take a portion of the water that's coming down Main Street and put it in, incorporate it into your facility. You can build it on our land, in our park, but it's underground, it's under the parking lot, and all the water off your site runs into there. A big portion of the water that runs down Main Street runs into there and our park parking lot. So they agreed to it and um, you know the bottom line is uh, we need every community in British Columbia, or in British Columbia especially, uh, the Okanagan, to be looking at something like that. I mean we know Okanagan Lake Bridge you know was built three years ago. Anybody know where the storm water goes off that bridge? If into the lake, right? So if there was a big old used oil tanker taking all the used oil out of all the gas stations in the Okanagan up to Vernon to be uh, uh, redistilled or whatever the heck they do with it, what if an accident happened? What would happen to all that oil? You know, the catch basins have oil separators, no question, but uh, in a catastrophe, it, it would be disastrous for the whole South Okanagan end of the lake and uh, Sioux Lake, Vassal Lake, and all the rest of it. So. I think with uh, climate change coming, uh, we're going to have uh, more 10-year events. We're going to have bigger 10-year events, never mind the 20-year events and the 50-year events. I think uh, we need to be prepared for this, and that's why I congratulate you guys on this uh, conference, and I think uh, certainly the province endorses what you're doing, and uh, we encourage you to keep up all the good work, and thank you very much for everything you've done, and have a great day. Thank you.